So I'm not a specialist of algebraic geometry. And so I try to look at it uh, in, I mean, in a way that is probably not very geometric. And the purpose now, of course, is to understand better how uh, it's, it's connected. Uh, so the, the situation is, is, is like this. So uh, in, in, in algebraic geometry, we can say that there are two kinds of uh, spaces. So the, the schemes, which are, can be seen as commutative rings, which are dualized into affine schemes, and then clued together in an appropriate way. And uh, then the bundles above them, uh, which are usually described as, as quasi-coherent uh, modules uh, over a specific structure sheaf of, of rings. Okay, and uh, so much progress has been made uh, in, the, in the recent years to define sheaf models of dependent and homotopy type theory. Uh, uh, in particular, uh, after the ideas of uh, Vladimir, Vladimir Voivodsky. And so, uh, linear logic is extremely important in, in proof theory. And uh, it's not entirely clear uh, how it is connected to these uh, developments. And a tempting answer, or, or you know, uh, is to, is to think of linear logic as some kind of logic of bundles in the same way as we can think of dependent types as some kind of logic, I mean, not necessarily schemes, but of, 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 of sheaves. Okay. And so uh, what I will uh, develop now is, is, is just a really, a, I mean, you, one should think of it as a first attempt, but there are interesting phenomena that I thought was, I mean, we are worth uh, um, disc I mean, discussing here. So, uh, but first, a word about linear logic. So, linear logic is really a very, very simple primitive uh, logic, which you can think of uh, the logic of tensor and, uh, and uh, some linear kind of implication. So, uh, so, in particular, every symmetric monoidal closed category defines a model of, of linear logic. So, a typical example that you should keep in mind here is the category of R modules for a given commutative ring R. So, conjunction in the logic is interpreted as the uh, tensor product, which is here the abelian group quotiented by uh, the, the relations uh, R. And implication, okay, which comes with uh, conjunction, uh, and which is used in logic for doing hypothet hypothetical uh, reasoning, uh, is interpreted as the linear home, which is here the group, uh, abelian group of R module homomorphisms. Okay, and uh, this category here of uh, modules uh, defines, uh, defines a symmetric monoidal closed category. And so the, the, uh, uh, purpose, so maybe I could say, okay, what it means just, I mean, uh, uh, it, it says that uh, if you have uh, here P, you have an isomorphism here. Uh, okay, let's say. Okay, and this, this is, I mean, uh, this is, or maybe here, yeah. I mean, in, logically, this is understood as the fact that if M and N implies P, then uh, it's the same as N implies uh, uh, here, M implies P. Okay. So, uh, and so that gives a very strange, even sometimes awkward view on and the typically uh, 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 geometry, because we are searching for such uh, structures uh, of an implicative, you know, logical nature. And so what the purpose of this talk is to extend and adapt this interpretation of, you know, formulas of linear logic as R modules into pre-sheaves of modules over covariant pre-sheaves uh, of commutative rings. Okay, so 
So it's really taking the, uh, I mean, shifting from this category of modules over one commutative ring to a category of pre-shifts of modules over a covariant uh, pre-shift. So in particular, if, uh, I mean, among covariant pre-shifts, um, we have schemes, okay? And so here, what uh, this uh, work shows is that the, the category of modules and not the category, I mean, so I don't speak about quasi-coherent modules, I take general modules, that it will satisfy, I mean, the, the laws of this uh, logic here, okay? So it will define a symmetric monoidal closed category. And of course, the result is interesting in itself. Uh, it also gives some kind of uh, maybe unexpected uh, attention to this general notion of uh, uh, pre-shift of module that I will come later, so without any quasi-coherent condition. But also the method, I find, I find it interesting. So one, pur I mean, one, one main purpose of, of my talk here is to explain the method for showing that, um, I mean, this category, I mean, the, the, the category we, we, we will study is, in fact, uh, monoid or closed. Okay, so, uh, uh, and so to, 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 to work, I will try to be as general as possible. So I will take an axiomatic approach to abelian groups. So I want to axiomatize the properties of the category ab of abelian groups and homomorph homomorphisms between them. So all I, I will develop will be based on a number of axioms that I will describe along the way. So uh, the first one is that we have a symmetric monoidal category of abelian groups where every reflexive pair here as a co-equalizer, okay? So, a co I mean, as a kind of quotient, okay? Which is moreover preserved by the tensor product on each component. And so here, reflexive pair is just a pair of maps with a common section, okay? So, uh, and in that case, the, the, I mean, if we look at the specific uh, 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 reflexive pairs, we, we have this property in the, in the category of abelian groups. And so uh, then, uh, starting from this category of abelian groups, uh, a commutative ring is just a monoid object uh, in the uh, category, which simply means that it has a multiplication and a neutral, I mean, uh, a neutral element, and that they satisfy associativity. I mean, multiplication satisfy associativity. There is a neutrality and here commutativity. Okay. So all these diagram commute. Uh, and the uh, category uh, ring of commutative rings is just deduced from there. It's uh, the category of uh, commutative rings and ring homomorphisms, which are simply defined as a map uh, in the category A or AB. Okay? Uh, it's, a, it's a map making these two diagrams commute, okay? which simply means that the map pre preserves multiplication and the neutral element. Okay. So that's very basic. Uh, 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 and so uh, we get a, ca a category ring of commutative rings. And uh, the, I mean, it's, it's worth observing that for very general reasons, the category ring has finite sums, okay, which is defined by the tensor product. So in particular, the sum of two commutative rings uh, I mean, when I say the sum, I mean the categorical sum is just given by the tensor product, okay, which is also uh, a commutative ring uh, uh, using the symmetry of the, of the category of abelian groups. Okay, uh, so, okay, we get that. Uh, and we will work a lot with this uh, category. But again, all the construction I've done could be, could be done with, uh, you know, other, uh, base, base categories um, than uh, the category of abelian groups. Okay, so uh, now, once, once we are up here, we can construct the category of modules over a ring R. So again, there is no surprise, it's just an object, a, a module is, uh, R module is, is an object M equipped with a map here, which is the action of the ring on the, uh, on the module satisfying uh, the usual law for, 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 for an action, 
in here and here, okay, the two usual laws. And so formally, an R module is the same thing as an allen moore algebra for a, sp a specific monad induced by the commutative ring in the category. So again, uh, there is absolutely nothing really uh, 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 new here. Uh, uh, we have a notion of uh, mod R module homomorphism. And so we get the category that I was describing a bit earlier. So this is the category whose objects are R modules and whose maps are the R module homomorphism between them. Okay. And the uh, next uh, I mean, purpose will be to glue together, in a way, all these categories of modules in, in a way that is uh, 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 meaningful, and I will explain uh, now. And the first step, in fact, is to look at two categories. Uh, I mean, the first one is the, ca the category of general modules, uh, where a module is just now defined as a ring and a commutative ring and an R module. So it's the two things at the same time. And a module homomorphism from Rm to Sn is just a ring homomorphism from R to S and a map making this diagram commute. Okay, so we have here uh, R tensor M acting, then F is the same as applying U on R and F on M and then act, I mean, uh, letting S act on M. Okay. Uh, so I mean, this definition makes, makes sense, and that's why we call that a module homomorphism. And so the category mod has objects the modules, and the maps are the module homomorphisms. So clearly, there is a functor from this category to ring, which is the, just the forgetting functor, for, forgetting the module part. It, it transports Rm to R. OK, that's, I mean, nothing really surprising here, but this will play a very important role in, in, in what I'm going to, to speak about uh, now. Okay. Uh, and there is a notation that is very convenient to use. So uh, when we have a module homomorphism, uf, you know, rm to sn, it's nice to say that it's, it's really a map from m to n, okay, but above uh, a map from r to s. So, the, you know, this map here, okay, lives in the category mod, and its image is this map. And so it's nice to think of, of it, uh, you know, in a fibered way. So maybe I can draw a picture that we have here uh, R, S, U, and M lives above, I mean, lives above R. And so I, I, I use this little this notation here, and that we have f here, which lives above u. And see, really, the, the intuition here, uh, OK, uh, is uh, inspired by uh, joint work with uh, uh, Noam Zeilberger. So where we really uh, have this uh, view that uh, every ring homomorphism, in this case, Okay, but more generally, whenever we have a functor uh, from a category E to a, I mean, total category to a base category, that's, but so in, in this specific case, in the case uh, 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 of a ring homomorphism, that a ring homomorphism induces a fiber, okay, we can think of it as some kind of fiber consisting of all the module homomorphisms of, of that form, okay. So all, so this leaves here in the category of ring, and this is here in the category of modules. Okay, so there is a functor here, f as u as image, and we can think of f as an element of the fiber of, of u. Okay, and so uh, when I write this, also it's you know a little bit inspired by logic here. It says that f is in the fiber of u. Okay, and so that means that it satisfies this. Uh, I mean, it simply it means, I mean, that this uh, diagram commutes, okay. Okay, and by the way, uh, if we take the fiber of the identity map, we get exactly the category uh, here of uh, modules, of R modules, okay, so that's, that's nice. Uh, okay. okay, so uh, the important uh, point now uh, but it's a well-known fact, is that the functor that we describe here 
is a, a bifibration, a Grothendieck bifibration. So what does it mean? It simply means that every ring homomorphism induces an adjunction, uh, which is uh, defined by restriction here. So uh, clearly, if I have a map from R to S, which is a ring homomorphism, every S module becomes an R module by restriction, but also I have an extension uh, that enables uh, by tensoring, and I will explain that. Uh, uh, although these are, I would say, pretty well known, I, I think it's nice to think a little bit about, about them. So uh, res, okay, we speak about the restriction here. So it's very easy, okay? So if we have an S module, uh, it induces an R module, uh, which I, I, I write like restriction uh, of N, uh, with the same underlying object, and uh, now uh, the R uh, action is just defined in that way, okay? Just by mapping R into S and then letting S act. I mean, really nothing sur surprising. And what is uh, nice is that, in fact, this construction comes with a Cartesian map in the sense of, uh, of Grothendieck, so that's why we have uh, a fibration, but the fibration is also a bifibration, because we can construct uh, a left adjoint to a restriction. Uh, and the way to, to do that is just, okay, so one way is to associate to the uh, homomorphism of rings an RS module that I write like this, which is a reflexive co-equalizer uh, of, uh, of this diagram. Okay. So, uh, and so it's an uh, R tensor S module that we, we will use then uh, with the composition of bi module here, so which is just, just you know, the usual way, given an uh, S1 R like bimodule and an RS2 bimodule to get a S1, S2 uh, bimodule uh, by, def I, mean, def I mean, defined as a, as, as a co equalizer. Okay, uh, this is the co equalizer of these two maps here. Okay, so we get uh, uh, this uh, uh, here. And so this is the usual way to, to I mean, uh, to, to compose uh, bimodules. And if we apply this composition now, uh, so we take M in uh, R module and we uh, compose with this. Uh, so M is, is just a R module. And here this is a RS by module. If we compose them, we get exactly what we want, which is an S module. And uh, this provides a, a left adjoint to restriction. These things are, are, are pretty well known. I'm, I'm just taking a lot of, you know, of care to describe them. But uh, okay. it's, for the moment, there is nothing. New. So at this point, we make the uh, extra assumption that A is uh, monoidal closed, okay, and as co-reflexive co equalizers now. So uh, for the moment, I was only using co-equalizers, but here I will need equalizers. And I will, uh, the internal home object in A is noted like this, okay, home of MN. And so now there is something a bit new, okay, uh, and I, f I find it cute, uh, uh, is that it's, 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 it's very, it makes a lot of sense to introduce a, a category of module and what I call retromorphisms. Uh, so a retromorphism from Sn to Rm, okay, consists, so, you know, consists of a ring homomorphism from R to S, so it goes in the other direction, and a map from N to M, making this diagram commute. So it's a li little bit strange at the beginning. So uh, it says that when I have uh, R and N, I can up use the U here, which is a map from R to S, then act, and then apply F. is the same as applying F and then acting. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, this defines a category. Okay. So it's possible to compose these maps, these retro maps. And there is also an obvious functor which, which transports every uh, R module to its underlying commutative uh, ring. And the functor uh, is, a, is a Grothendieck vibration, which coincides with fact. So, so it's something uh, uh, which is, um, which is uh, very important, but often not completely uh, um, uh, 
let's say, I mean, not, not used very much, is the fact that whenever we have a vibration, we can define, so a, a Grothendieck vibration can be seen as uh, a funk, uh, um, um, so pseudo functor to cat, and uh, we can fi fiber-wise uh, take the opposite category and then apply the Grothendieck construction in the other direction to get a new vibration. And this defines what is called the opposite of a Grothendieck vibration. And this is exactly what I've computed here. So in particular, the functor uh, defines a vibration, but more than that, it defines a bifibration because there is a co-extension uh, 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 adjunction here where uh, uh, the, uh, okay, so fiber-wise, okay, so here we have the, the same restriction functor from an S module to an R module, given a map here, but now we have a co-extension, uh, which, uh, in fact, uh, defines a left adjoint to the restriction. And so this uh, co-extension is defined as an equalizer, not, not, okay, of this, uh, of this uh, diagram here. So equalizer means you have a map here, okay? And what the equalizer does, in fact, it, it, it uh, provides an internal description of the set of maps from S to M, okay, so making this diagram commute. But this can be seen, okay, in fact, as the set of R module homomorphisms from the restriction of S uh, along U into M. Okay, so that, what this shows, in fact, and, uh, is that we have something that sometimes I, I like to call a tri-fibration, uh, which is something quite known, okay? I mean, here, uh, but it's really important in, 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 in the work I, I, I will do next, okay? So in the next 10, 15 minutes. So it's important just to remember that, that when we have a, a ring homomorphism from R to R, S, we have three functors, the restriction functor, which comes with uh, here a left adjoint and a right adjoint. Okay. And by the way, these structures are fundamental in uh, uh, the uh, semantic or, or, or geometric description of dependent types and homotopy types. So it's, it's good to, to see that they are uh, around here too. Okay. Um, so there is this very beautiful idea by uh, Bill Lovier that these adjunctions, in fact, they correspond to quantification in logic. Uh, I, 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 we can discuss that a bit later, but uh, if you want to have, uh, I mean, to, to clarify that point, but okay. So that's, that's where we are. And now we move to the next uh, uh, stage, which is the purpose of this, of, of this work, which is to uh, give, um, uh, a description uh, of uh, pre-sheaves, uh, let's say, of, yes, pre-sheaves, uh, covariant pre-sheaves of, of rings and pre-sheaves of modules uh, above them. So uh, a ringed category, uh, I will define simply a ring category as a pair consisting of a category and a functor to ring, okay, the category of commutative rings. So uh, typically, okay, the category mod that we've seen defines a ring category with the functor that takes a module and just returns the underlying ring. Okay. So, uh, in fact, uh, if we think about, uh, about it, this defines an object in the slice two category of categories above rings. Okay. So this two category as ring categories as, as objects, fiber-wise functors as um, one cells and natural transformations as two cells, okay? Uh, Fiber-wise natural transformations. And so, uh, moreover, the two categories Cartesian, with Cartesian product defined by uh, the pullback here. So uh, typically, okay, here you have two objects of this category. So, okay, I, I'm speaking about these two categories here. So here, mod with the functor here, so this ringed category, defines one object of the two category. This is another object, I mean, it's the same here, but okay. 
And when we take the Cartesian uh, product, it's just by taking the pullback here, which is this thing. Okay. So what is an object here in this category? It's just a pair of modules with on the same ring. Okay. And so we can define a tensor product, which will just map, I mean, this uh, pair of modules on the same ring to the tensor product. Uh, that we defined earlier. So if we have Rm and Rn objects here, their, their image will be the, just the tensor product over R. Okay. So you see here, we are starting to define constructions above the category of ring. And this is what we are going to do in the next uh, five, 10 minutes. And just to see, okay, uh, if we look at the morphisms in this category, uh, they will be mapped. Okay, so if we have two morphisms, H1 and H2, in this category of modules, uh, where you know these maps are, are changing at the same time. I mean, the, there's a change of basis here. Uh, uh, I mean, they, they change the underlying ring. Then we can tensor the H1, H2, and there is just a formal definition using uh, universality of the of the co-equalizer so that we can do the, the job. And so, moreover. What we see is that mod is, in fact, a symmetric monoidal ring category. So by this, uh, what I mean is that this tensor mod, in fact, defines uh, uh, a symmetric pseudo-monoid okay, in these two categories, which is what I simply call a symmetric monoidal, not category, but ring category, because everything lives above the category uh, of rings. Okay. Uh, uh, in particular, the fiber-wise unit okay, uh, of this uh, pseudo-monoid, uh, so the unit, if you like, of the, of the uh, monoidal category, is just given by, so this functor will be important, so the functor that, that goes from ring to modules, okay, which takes a ring and just transports it to the R module, uh, I mean, to the ring R seen as an R module. Okay, so. uh, and now we get uh, to the situation where we can apply a beautiful uh, idea uh, uh, which we started with uh, uh, Grothendieck, uh, and then uh, uh, I, I mentioned here uh, Damasio Gabriel, and, and then we, which was uh, reused in many. I mean, it's a very important point of view on algebraic, I mean, algebraic geometry which is to work with the so-called functors of points. Okay. So what I call a, a ring space uh, is a covariant pre-shift okay, uh, on the category of rings. So by the way, I don't ask anything here, which probably may be seen as weird. I don't ask that it's a shift, or I just take a general covariant pre-shift on the category of, of ring. Okay, So I don't ask that, it, that it's uh, a sheaf of any, you know, Grothendieck topology, or that it's a, it's a scheme. Okay, it's just like this. Uh, and so, to every such space X, we associate the Grothendieck category of its points. So, what is, what are the points here? They are the pairs R X, where X is an element of that set, which associates. To the, I mean, which I mean, that set, which is the the image of the ring R here into set, okay, and so that I mean, seen from that point of view, the pre-shift transports any ring R to the set of R points, okay, points of that shape, specific shape R, and the maps are the uh, ring homomorphisms, I mean, the pairs, okay, the map from R X to S Y, what are they? Well, they are the whole ring homomorphism from R to S, which you, you can think of as some kind of change of ring, okay, or change of affine uh, scheme, transporting the element X in X of R to the element Y in X of S, in the sense that X, so if we take this pre-shift, X of U, U is a, ma a map from R to S, so X of U is a, is a function from uh, the points of uh, X above R to the points of X above S, and so we want that X is mapped into Y. Okay. So that's the uh, Grothendieck category of points, okay, uh, of X. And uh, the, 
uh, category comes equipped with a functor of points okay, to ring. So it, as such, it's defined what I call a ring category. So really, the intuition is that every ring space defines a ring category. And now a map of ring spaces may be equivalently, equivalently defined as a functor between the categories of points making this diagram commute. Okay, so it's really a map of ringed uh, categories. Okay, so in a way, we're transporting the language of pre-shifts into the long, language of categories. And uh, what is very nice is that we can uh, define, I mean, and, uh, this, in, in, this is in particular uh, in, in this work uh, here, but uh, okay, here I take the definition typically in Domasio Gabriel. So pre-shift of module on a ring space. Okay, what is it? It's the data, okay, for each point Rx, okay, of a module, e, I mean, of an R module. So the idea is that every point of shape R in X comes equipped with a module uh, of the same, uh, um, with the same underlying ring. And moreover, okay, it's not just that. So it's okay. Each point is equipped with a module of the same shape, you could say. And now each map uh, here in the category of points uh, induces a, a module homomorphism from m x to n y above this uh, uh, this uh, homomorphism of rings. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Uh, we also need that theta satisfies two functorial properties that you know, identities are mapped to identities, and then we can compose. But uh, essentially, the definition is here, okay? Of, uh, so what is called a pre-shift of module. But a very nice uh, observation that Konsevich and Rosenberg use uh, in their work is that such uh, module of pre-shift, which I, I will also call an o o OX uh, module, uh, okay, I will come back to, to this uh, uh, I mean, name, but in fact, can be, can be seen as a functor from the category of points to the category mod that I introduced earlier. So, uh, I mean, really it's very simple in a way, I mean, seen from that point, categorical point of view. So, so you have a functor from points of x to ring, and what you do is you lift it to a functor to the category of modules, which is exactly what it should, should be, yes? So every point here, now is mapped into a module, and uh, the, uh, if a point has some shape given by a ring R, then the module should have the same shape because the diagram commutes. Okay. Uh, and so uh, now every ring space that I define like this comes ex equipped. I mean, it's good to uh, observe that with a specific pre-shift of modules, which is just given by okay. We have the functor from points to ring, which is defined by, by, I mean, by x, as we saw earlier. Okay? But now we can post-compose with this functor, which uh, is the functor that we saw already, that takes a ring and maps it to uh, the uh, same ring, but now, I mean, same ring R, but seen now as an R module. Okay? So, uh, so th there is this functor here from module to ring, and this is a section of the functor. And so we get immediately because we, we know now that a module is just a way to lift this functor into a functor here. That, well, one way to lift is precisely to, uh, to use the structural pre-shift of module, I mean, the, or the structure pre-shift of module here. Okay, so now we'll re redo the same game as earlier. So we'll define a, a category pre-shift mod of pre-shifts of modules, like I've just defined, and forward morphism. So it's very easy, a forward morphism is a, a, a map from x to y, okay, so or a natural transformation. So these are covariant pre-shifts, so it's just a map between covariant pre-shifts, which induces a functor of, between the cat categories of points. And what we want is that, uh, I mean, we, we equip this functor with a natural transformation from m into n of points of f, okay? And that is what we call a forward morphism of pre-shifts of modules. And what we ask is that is vertical, uh, which can be formulated uh, in a neat way. But the intuition is that uh, the, uh, this 
fresh leaf here, uh, sorry, this natural transformation should not change the underlying ring. Okay, the, uh, so when we move from a, a R module here to uh, an, uh, I don't know, another module here, it should be the same underlying ring. And so that's expressed in, in, in that way. Okay, so phi doesn't change the under, I mean, the ring uh, that describes the shape of the point. Okay, and so now this functor is very cl clear. I mean, okay, sorry, no, I, I should say, okay, so this is the category here, and there is a very easy functor which transports, uh, a, I mean, the, the category of uh, pre shifts of modules into the category of uh, ring spaces, okay, so our covariant pre shifts of, of a ring. And it's, it's very easy because the, what you do is you have this thing here and, and you just post compose with that functor from mod to ring, and, and then you get the underlying, uh, underlying uh, covariant uh, pre -shift. But really, you should think of this functor exactly as the functor that we had here from mod to ring, except now it's all uh, fibered. So now, instead of mod, we have pre -shifts of modules, and here we have pre -shifts of ring. But otherwise, it's exactly the same. And so, in the same way as uh, what I was uh, doing here, it makes sense to uh, write this, that uh, uh, you know, if this is a map between spaces, this is a map between modules, and they're consistent I mean, when, when we have uh, this, uh, uh, when, when we are in this situation here. Okay. So, uh, okay, uh, and it's not very difficult to see that the functor P is a Grothendieck vibration, okay? Uh, and the reason is that, okay, if you have an N module here on points of Y and a map from points of X to points of Y, you can just precompose. So it's very easy, okay? You know, this thing, so restriction is just precomposition with uh, F here. What is uh, more, uh, I mean, interesting is that, in fact, we see that it's a bi vibration, but to prove that, uh, uh, I mean, one needs to ask that every category of, of, of uh, modules has small co-limits, and uh, well, this, this is true in, for, in the case of uh, abelian groups, but if we have that, then for very formal reasons, the functor here is not just a vibration, it's a bi-fibration, okay, uh, which means that there is a left adjoint, okay, uh, and the left adjoint can be described in a, in a, in a kind of concrete way uh, as saying that to any point y okay, uh, of shape r in y, you will associate uh, this uh, uh, sum of module, okay? So, okay, where you look at the uh, inverse image of y by the uh, map f, and then you do the, that sum, okay? And uh, the adjunction will enable us, so I, I, I like to draw this, these things, which uh, in fact uh, is a language that uh, uh, we, we, we design with uh, Noam Zeilberger and, and that I find very, very, very pleasant. So here, for instance, this adjunction says that we have just as many maps from M to F star N uh, above the identity as maps from M to N above F which is the same as, so this is really describing the bi-fibration structure as looking at maps, but where F star here and F shriek can be seen as modalities, and there, uh, there, there is this kind of interplay between them. And we will see very soon that it plays a very important uh, role in, in, in what I want to, to prove in the end. Um, uh, and how much time do I have? Uh, because uh, you have... Uh yeah, okay, so it will be far, far from enough, yeah. So far, from, no, far from enough means not good, so it will be enough. Yeah, more than enough, yes. Okay. Far could be more, but usually, yeah. <laughs> okay, more. yeah, much more, yes, it should be, yeah. So, so I mean, I will use these little manipulations uh, uh, very soon uh, to show you uh, some, okay. But, okay, so now, Exactly as I was doing before, like you remember, I introduced a category of modules with forward morphisms, but now I will introduce a category 
with backward morphisms. Uh, and uh, so it's exactly the same story, except that psi now goes in this direction. So uh, a, a morphism, a backward morphism, is uh, a, a morphism of ring spaces. Okay, this is points of f, and this this should be here. Psi goes in this other, I mean, other direction, and we have the same verticality uh, condition. And what is uh, nice is that uh, again there is an obvious functor from Preshift's mod, you know, uh, like this uh, backward morphism into the category of uh, covariant uh, Preshift's. And in that case, I will write this notation. So it's the same as before, except that I write up here, just to say that this is upping. OK. And now if we make, the again, the extra assumption that the category ring, as well as every category of R modules, has small limits, then, in fact, uh, we get a, a Grothendieck bifibration. So this uh, functor that we have is not just a vibration, it's a bifibration. Um, so the fact that it's a vibration comes from the fact that, in fact, it's the opposite or uh, vibration to the original, so uh, to the original vibration that we de define on pre-shifts of modules. But, but now, thanks to this assumption of small limits, we can construct uh, a right adjoint to the, to the functor. Uh, and if we look at uh, the situation, in fact, what we get is a tripole of adjunctions, or I should say two adjunctions, you know, uh, uh, but three functors, in the same way as what we had with modules. So this means that the situation with uh, modules lifts to uh, pre-shifts of modules okay, over, over covariant pre-shifts uh, of, of rings. And what is then quite, I mean, this is already good, but what is really important is that, in fact, this category pre-shift mod happens to be symmetric monoidal closed above the Cartesian closed category. I mean, with, because this is a category of pre-shifts, it's Cartesian closed. So this is a little bit uh, demanding here, this part. So, uh, so okay, what I'm, I'm going to do is uh, construct a symmetric monoidal closed structure on this category, which will be mapped to the uh, Cartesian closed structure of this one. So just to remind uh, how the, I mean, the Cartesian structure on covariant pre-shifts. Uh, pre so if we have two covariant pre-shifts, x times y is simply defined pointwise. So the, uh, that means that the points of shape R are just pairs of the point of x of shape R and the point of y of shape R. Uh, and now if we take m and n uh, as pre-shifts pre of modules above x and y, we can define their tensor product just in a very stupid way. So we'll just take points of x times y, which is in fact equivalent to this category, and then uh, construct by the universality of the pullback here, this map m, n, okay? and then use the tensor. So you see it's very, the construction of the tensor product is very elementary. Um, the internal home is more subtle. And that's what is a bit surprising that we have an internal home. So internal home on a uh, ring set uh, is defined in this way. So uh, the uh, covariant pre uh, will transport a ring to the set okay, of natural transformations, making that diagram commute, where yr is the Yoneda pre associated to a ring. Okay, so, uh, so this is the usual uh, way to turn a ring into a pre by just looking at the maps from the ring r to any ring s. Okay, and so uh, this is, the, this is fa a famous construction that enables to take two uh, pre-shifts and, and x and y and to construct the, this home, internal home. Okay? And now, given uh, a pre-shift m on x and a pre-shift n on, on y, here we can construct a, a, okay, a pre-shift of module 
over x implies y in the following way. So to any element here, f, so that means to any map here, or making that our natural transformation, make, making that diagram commute, we associate an R module, which is the R module of all the natural transformations uh, making that uh, diagram commute. Okay. So, uh, and so it's very too categorical and, and formal, but maybe to, to see it more concretely, so the idea is that a natural transformation phi is a family of module homomorphism from M to N, but Mx to N of Fux, where F is this map here, and satisfying uh, some naturality condition. But it can be also constructed as an end formula in the category of R modules. Okay, and so the end formula, maybe uh, we can discuss it when, when uh, I mean, if there are questions, but okay. So what is important is that we have this formula. And so the main result of the talk is that the tensor product uh, that I've just defined and the implication, in fact, they equip pre I mean, this uh, category of pre of modules with a structure of symmetric monoidal category, which is mapped to the, uh, uh, I mean, to the Cartesian closed structure. Okay, so in particular, if we have M and N, X and Y modules, their M tensor N is a X times Y module, and M R O N is a X implies Y module. And I will, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm nearly finished, I need three minutes. So in that way, as an application, uh, I will show what I wanted to show at the very beginning of my talk, that the category, so I started with, if you remember, uh, modules of a one ring, but now I have a pre shift category of pre shift of, of modules ab ab above uh, a covariant pre shift of rings. And I will show that it's symmetric monoidal closed and thus a model of linear logic. So the tensor product will be defined uh, by the uh, tensor product that we uh, define, we've just defined here. But now this tensor product lives above x times x. So I will pull it back using the bifibrational structure into a pre shift over x, pre shift of modules over the ring space uh, x. And I will do the same for implication. But for implication, there is this subtlety that I will define it as okay, I start by taking m implies this thing, which lives above x implies x times x. And then I will pull back along this map that is canonical. Whenever you have a, a Cartesian closed category, you have a map that takes one parameter, then the second, I mean, and then returns the function which takes the second parameter and then this uh, output x times x. And just by this very formal computation, I get this property that we get, uh, uh, I mean, here we have a symmetric monoidal closed category. And okay. The proof is really purely, I mean, the proof that, that the M tensor is left adjoint to M implies is really a sequence of very basic manipulations, okay? Uh, that, okay, uh, I can come back to. And so, moreover, we can see that the, the, the uh, functors, so whenever I have a map from X to Y, I will get here a strongly monoidal functor from the, the modules of a Y to, uh, to the modules of a, of a X. Okay, and this implies that we have the, the left and right adjoint are lax or oplax monoidal. And so I'm, I'm nearly finished now. So what I will not speak about is how to construct an exponential modality for linear logic using the sweet layer dual construction. Okay, but uh, this is in the paper, so, and we can uh, discuss it offline if you wish. Uh, okay, but the idea is that Okay, we, we use the fact that every uh, uh, module can be uh, turned into, uh, so here I wrote algebra, so I, I should have written co-algebra here. Anyway, so I'm, I'm finished. So, uh, okay, what uh, is missing here, in a way, is we would like to work with sheaves and schemes instead maybe of general pre-sheaves. And maybe more importantly, understand the structure of this inclusion functor from quasi-coherent modules to uh, this category I've, I've described, okay? Uh, and how the structure, the good structure here, can be propagated here. And uh, uh, the point is derived categories uh, have, I mean, so when you derive this category, you get 
very often uh, beautiful dualities. And my hope is that now the dualities are here in a way, uh, because the, the, this implication can be seen as a very, very primitive notion of duality. And my hope is that by looking at derived categories, I can move that into here, the derived. And so linear logic is now, I mean, is, and people, I mean, I've, I've noticed that this is very much related to the grothendieck verdier duality. And what I'm doing here is some kind of very primitive version of it, that, and, but one is derived categories to achieve, uh, I mean, I mean to, to even get closer to this picture. And also, clearly, what I'm doing is, is um, thought in, 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 I mean, should be connected, I mean, or, or in a way is designed to be at some point connected to d dependent and homotopy type theory. Okay, thanks. So we'll have uh, questions for comments, uh, time for questions, comments, yeah, please. Uh, uh, hello, it's Maxim Pelsic, sorry, I'm not here. Uh, okay, uh, I hear your voice. Can you, yeah, I can see you quickly, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah first, uh, uh, I just got to ask the stick to represent what was, like, for, what was it for a fine for, for, sorry? Uh, sorry, I, what uh, is it uh, this category of prefixes modules over four pieces of appliance? Ah, yes, yes. So, so that's the point that uh, it's not the category of modules uh, because I don't look at quasi coherent modules. So, it's something very, I mean, strange <laughs> in a way is that when we look at an affine scheme, what we get as category of uh, pre shifts of modules is not the original category of, of modules. So, we, we would need so to, to apply an operation of, you know, quasi coherator something that you, you've, you've been looking at, uh, and I think illusory also. And so th th there is a question of how, you know, this map here, which in the case of an affine scheme is really mod R, okay, if, if uh, we take uh, the affine scheme associated to the commutative ring. So, and this category is larger. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it's some kind of sensory piece. Right? Yes, it's Sorry? Cool. Is it kind of sensory piece that you, you go to some rule space in your, your constant definition? Yeah. Yes, yes, but I, 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 as a matter of fact, I would be interested to, to have uh, your feedback because uh, I think here uh, there, is so, there is some phenomena that I would like to understand better, and in particular, ways to take a general uh, module and turn it into a quasi-coherent. -co and I think this, this I mean, I, I would be grateful to have your feedback. Yeah, yeah actually, actually, I also want to say you referred to, uh, to kind of, let's say, the Rosenberg 2004. I think it was, I think Rosenberg, such a, like Rosenberg, was a preprint of Max Planck. Which I wasn't really possible, I have to say, kind of like hard work between. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So you hear that a little bit uh, yeah. towards the end, but we have a monoidal category, a semi close monoidal category yes. over a Cartesian closed category. So yes. Does this allow us to extend this uh, semantics to the additive part of the ah. of, of linear logic? Uh, you had a bit about the exponential modality, but maybe we can have more. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yes. Um, uh, yes, it's uh, it, it 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 would work, I believe. Yes, I, uh, but in in that case, we would need to add uh, a property. I mean, the, the axiomatic uh, that the category ab has uh, sums, and then and then uh, I think it should. Yes, it it, it does work. Yes, but but it's a, a slightly. Uh, degenerated, de degenerated situation, I believe, where the plus and the with are identified. I, so that's my guess, yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 They say that uh, uh, linear logic, they are very simple. And yes. And they, they, they correspond to a duality. But yes. if you consider more complicated object from logic, uh, logic to which they will correspond to an algebraic Yes, algebraic so. Yes, so so uh, uh, I mean the uh, so this this has been so 
interesting that, that the there is a notion of Grothendieck Verdier category, which is really uh, uh, what we call star autonomous category in the, I mean in the field of uh, linear logic. Uh, and the, I mean, the intuition I have is that uh, we have for any uh, space, like, you know, ring space, now we, we have this category here uh, of uh, here. So this category, pre-shift of module, yes, which is a model, okay, of, so it's a symmetric monoidal closed category, which means there is a tensor and implication. The question is when this uh, implication has a dualizing object, which uh, is precisely what uh, uh, corresponds to this, I mean, this is one way to think of this Grothendieck-Verdier duality where, so you have, uh, and this means that you have an, an object. Um, ah, yeah. So you have a specific object that. So in logic we write it like this, but okay, maybe I will write like this. So so there is always a map like this in a in a in a symmetric monoidal closed category, but so sometimes. We said that bottom is dualizing when this map is, uh, and this is exactly what gives this. Uh, okay, and so this, so question is when this pre-shift of module properly derived defines such a uh, situation where we have a dualizing object. This is, but then there is the thing is that the logic it seems speaks about the category of, let's say, modules or okay, over a, a space, yes? like a scheme. Yeah? And so the question is how we move between, and that's why this is, uh, you know, how we move from one scheme to another. And here what we see is that it will uh, induce some functors between the logic. And that is what I meant by very primitive, in the sense that it doesn't speak about quantification, usually. I mean, it could, but it's more just primitive logic of tensor, implication, negation, dualities. But then quantification is performed by changing, by moving between spaces. That would be the, the picture. And quantification would be produced by this change of uh, basis from you know, one, one space. Because now what, the, what, what we have is that we have basic operations on let's say, uh, uh, bundles or, you know, some, okay, you know these, these modules of tensoring implications. So it's some kind of tensorial calculus that we have on the bundles. And we want to see how, what happens when we move from one space to the other and how these operations are preserved. And when they are not, what happened? That's, that's the picture. That's why I say it's, very, I mean, it's simple because it's just the logic of the bundles over one space. And quantification then is by uh, shifting from one space to the other. I mean, that's, that would be the picture, yeah. OK, so thank you very much. If, uh, 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 yeah, I have Sorry. A, just a small meta question. Okay. We had a, uh, a conference uh, by uh, Nicolas Bay yesterday. Yeah. So is uh, your uh, way, your route, Connectable or uh, connected? Uh, or yes, that's a good that's a good question. Uh, so, so the I think there is a uh, I mean clearly, for instance, the question of mechanizing, you know, like form, form, formalizing these reasonings uh, in in a, in a machine, like you know, in Coq, or okay, makes a lot of sense. And in a way, what I I mean really my my approach here is to be as primitive as possible all, the, all along the way to see when more subtle geometric uh, data, like uh, quasi-coherence or, I mean, like this, uh, uh, emerge. Because that's okay. And, and, and so, in a way, it's, uh, uh, and in particular, all the reasonings I do are, are too categorical. And so, they, I mean, there they, they will be, I mean, when we have the tools, I think we can formulate them. 
uh, in, in that language. Moreover, I should say that the, the beautiful work that Nicolas has done, you know, from writing to uh, these operators, uh, we're spending a lot of time discussing with, with him and also Noam Stadelberger on trying to uh, understand that at, in that kind of language. I mean, not exactly that, but too categorical. So my, my hope is that, you know, um, at some point it merges well with typical algebraic geometry, which, which is clearly as many, I mean, beauties, yes? And here it's a different uh, flow, more too categorical, more abstract, more, but I mean, more, not abstract, but more maybe conceptual. And the hope is that, yeah. But yeah, yeah so, so my work, I, I have a lot of Nikolai uh, bear in mind when I, I do that as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we can continue the discussion during the coffee break. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful. Thanks again. Thanks.